Hello everybody, time for Hands on Mac. This week on Hands on Mac, I am going to show you how to get around the security protection on your Macintosh. Hands on Mac comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Mac is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click for three extra months free with a one-year package. Go to expressvpn.com slash H-O-M. Hello, everybody. Leo Laporte here, Hands on Mac, our short show where we give you great tips on how to use a Mac. This month, actually, at the beginning of the year, Apple decided to really crack down on third-party programs. It's probably a good idea. They wanted to make sure that you weren't installing malware on your system. And you probably have noticed this. Uh, when you try to open a program that isn't notarized, hasn't been approved by Apple, it says, oh, no, I can't open that. I can't scan that for malware. Well, let me show you what's going on. It's a program called Gatekeeper, and it's actually a brilliant idea. Apple started using Gatekeeper a couple of Mac OS versions ago, and over time, it's gotten stronger and stronger. You've probably seen this in your security and privacy control panel. Allow apps downloaded from, and by default, for a long time, it's been two choices. If you click App Store, and you should probably do that with members of your family who are you know, getting in a lot of trouble by downloading weird software. Only App Store apps from the Apple Store can be open. It's just like iOS. Now, most of us download apps from other places. So that's the setting by default that Gatekeeper chooses. App Store and identified developers. That means if a developer has a developer certificate, which you can get from Apple for 99 bucks a year, and has notarized it with Apple, it'll open it up. And you've seen that. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll show you, I'll open Handbrake here. And what it'll do is it'll pop up. Handbrake is an app downloaded from the internet. It does that for everything that you download that's not from the store. Do you want to open it? And if you say open, it opens it right up. So it's, it's given you the warning um, that you'd expect saying, well, you got this from the internet, but uh, maybe it's okay because it's notarized. But there are programs that aren't notarized. I'm going to open this up. This is a uh, ultimate program for cracking software, UPUB OR. And of course, these guys didn't take the time to notarize it or get the developer certificate. And I'm getting this warning. Ultimate PKG cannot be opened because it's from an unidentified developer. Now, it's funny. You'd expect to be seeing this more and more because Apple turned this feature up to 11 in January. But as a result, I think a lot of developers have taken the time. It's not that hard to get the program notarized. Apple doesn't have to, it's not like getting it on iOS where you have to get Apple's approval. They just go through a simple process to make sure it doesn't do bad things. If I click OK, that program does not open. But look at what's changed in Gatekeeper. Ultimate.package was blocked from use because it's not from an identified developer. And now I can click open anyway. So I think that's a pretty mild warning. There's another way to do it. When you see an application that you know you're going to have that problem with, right click on the application and select open. That also says you're explicitly opening this application. It'll give you that warning again. Oh, we can't verify it. Are you sure? And remember, I think this is a great warning. When you're doing that, you're saying, you know, I want to open this app, but Apple's saying, you know, think about this. There is a security implication here. But if you're sure that, you know, EPUB War is okay, I know what I've used it. I And by the way, it is. I use it all the time. Then it's okay to say open. This is pretty much the default behavior that you want. But occasionally, there are times when you just want Gatekeeper to open pro programs at any time. And there are, we think, there are going to be cases where you can't even do that bypass, that you won't be able to right click and say open, or Gatekeeper won't put that little pop up up here and open anyway. For those times, there's a command that'll turn Gatekeeper down. Now, Apple makes this a terminal command because the presumption is if you are sophisticated enough to know how to use the command line and, and motivated enough to search for this command 
well, all right, we're going to let you do this. And I think it's important because developers, I may be developing an app and I don't want to, I want to give it to friends and family, but you know, I don't, I don't want to have to pay for notarizing and everything. So let me show you this command and I'll show you the best way to use it. So this is uh, originally discovered by OS 10 daily, but it still seems to be the case. Here's iMore's description of it. And this is the command S U D O S P C T L dash dash master disable they point out that you need to be out of system preferences so i'm going to close gatekeeper for that right now go back to my terminal program and i'm going to type this in and let me explain we're going to get into the terminal more on future episodes but let me explain a little bit more what i'm doing sudo says do this as the super user so I'm going to have to authenticate with my administrator password before I can execute that. That's always the case on commands that modify the system or are just kind of special commands that you don't want everybody to operate without any control. SPCTL, uh, eh, your guess is as good as mine, but it's obviously something to control. I would guess it's controlling uh, the system protection, SP. Uh, on the Macintosh. And then we're going to do the thing that is most dangerous, master disable. There's also a master enable command, and you're going to want to know that because you're probably going to want to enable it, <laughs> re-enable it once you've turned it off. It's asking me, as you'll note now, for my administrator password. I'm going to enter that. That's because of the SUDO command. And now it's done. And you'll notice that there's a new setting for Gatekeeper. I'm going to unlock the system control panel so I can modify those settings. And look at that. There's a third setting. You, people who have been using the Mac for a while will remember that Anywhere setting was there for a long time. That's what's disappeared in Catalina, and that's the key. Now, if you want, you can just leave it like this. Click the middle button for 99% of the time, or even the top button for 99% of the time when you want to be secure. But now you'll have the ability to download and run programs from anywhere if you want it. If this is your computer and you know what you're doing, I would leave it like that. I'm going to go back to my terminal program, and we're going to do the same command, but this time instead of disable, we're going to say enable. So let me take out the dis, write the en. I'll close gatekeeper first, run the command. Now let's open security and privacy, the system preference pane. And you'll notice that I'm missing that anywhere button. It's gone. So that's how you can turn it on and off. Again, sudo, which says run this as an administrator, sp for system protection, ctl for control, dash dash master disable and master enable. If you want Gatekeeper to be less, it's still there, but less careful about protecting you, you might want to disable it. I think it's best just to know that that command's there. I'll be honest with you, I'm going to probably disable it permanently because I'm a sophisticated user. I know what I'm doing, and I don't think I'm going to get into any trouble. <laughs> Gatekeeper is a really great facility that balances security and power. And it gives you, with this one command, the ability to be all-powerful once again. So if you've been bothered by Gatekeeper, you know you want to download programs. Maybe you're a developer and you want to be able to install your own programs. This is a nice feature. For most people, it's probably a good idea to keep Gatekeeper fully enabled. And you might even want to go into mom and dad's computer and check the box that says only from the App Store so they're maximally protected. Next week, we're going to spend more time with the terminal because I think the ability to use the terminal on Mac OS really is one of the most powerful features of all. We'll talk more about the terminal next time on Hands-On Macintosh. If you have a question, a comment, a suggestion, email me, leo at twit.tv. Uh, until next Friday, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time on Hands-On Mac. Hands on Mac brought to you this week by ExpressVPN. VPNs, of course, protect your privacy and security online. But did you know you could take your TV watching to the next level by unlocking movies and shows only available in other countries? So many of us are stuck at home. It's only a matter of time before you burn out all the Netflix shows. Now you can use ExpressVPN to binge watch Star Trek on the UK Netflix. Protect yourself with the VPN I use and trust. Visit expressvpn.com slash H-O-M and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com 
slash H-O-M. ExpressVPN.com slash H-O-M.